In this video, we're painting Necrons. This is our galaxy, and it will be destroyed. How's it going on guys and girls? Welcome back to Burnt Aquila Painting. My name is Graham and welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be painting Necrons, specifically the Saltec Dynasty. So follow along these steps to get your armies on the tabletop. The music in this video is brought to you by the guys from Minus Alive, awesome musicians from my hometown, Southampton, and some very dear friends of mine. Both their new songs, The Wildfire and Amen to the Storytellers are both featured in this video. So if you like what you're hearing, go give them some love. Links to their Facebook, Instagram and YouTube are all down below. Let them know I sent you. So, as I said, in this video, we're going to be painting a Sao Tech Necrons. And the reason for that is because they are the Necrons that I used to collect when I first got into Necrons back in fourth, fifth edition. So when the Indominus box came out and I got a load of Necrons, I wanted to paint them up just like I did back when I was a kid. I wanted to share with you guys how I paint my Necrons with that easy dry brush style with a few little extras just to make them pop. So the mini I am going to be showing you guys on how to paint this is the Canoptic Reanimator from the Indominus box set. Reason being is because it has loads of little bits and bobs. It's big so you can see it on screen way easier. Uh, and also it's a, it's a cool looking mini. On top of that, it gives us a little bit of an opportunity to show a little bit of OSL first, that big orb in the middle as well. So step one base coats and the first base coats we're going to do is the bulk of that armor so with all my necrons i start off with a black primer the reason for this is because i want those recesses as dark as possible because we're going to be dry brushing or over brushing over the top of that black primer really quick really effective way of getting really quick bashed up armor look and honestly anyone can do it what is over brushing over brushing is basically just a wet heavy dry brush all you do is you don't take off that much paint and you go over the black primer really quickly because it is like dry brushing it keeps those recesses dark as well giving you that contrast and giving you that little bit of light and shadow if you don't think you've got enough coverage on your first pass you can go back and do two three four passes as well each one will build up that stronger tone Keep doing this technique until you're happy with your look. For this miniature, I did two passes of over, over brushing with dark steel color. Over brushing is a great technique for any weathered or bust up metallics you want. And it's really good for any true metallic paints. In this video, I'm not gonna go over the base, but I do have videos on basing and how I do my bases, link down below and in the cards as well. The one thing I don't particularly like about the Saltec color scheme is that there's a lot of steel there's a lot of just flat silver color. So just to break that up, I add a bit of bronze on all the joints, connection points, or anything like that. And just to give it a little bit more character on the armor plates on the top, I paint those bronze as well. Adding a second color in, like the bronze in this case, is a really good way just to break up lots and lots of a single color, but without detracting from the color scheme that you're painting. Having those little extras in there also really helps to define your miniatures on the tabletop from others as well. It gives them a little bit more of a personal character to you. Next, I go around the miniature and just fill in all the green orbs or anything that's going to be glowing the Saltec green color. For this, I just take a medium green and then just base coat it until you've got a good opacity. And that is all we're gonna be doing for those for now. Apart from that, I just paint a couple of the cables black and the base coating is done. Now we have those fundamental colors down, we're gonna add a little bit more contrast to them. And we do this by using shades. So we're gonna be using two shade colors for our Saltec Necrons. For all of the steel colors, we're gonna use a black wash all over. Get a big brush and just get it all over the miniature, making sure it's not pooling in any awkward places. For mine, I usually like it slightly darker towards the bottom and slightly lighter towards the top. Don't worry if you get too much wash on your miniatures. What you can do is just wash off the brush, dry it off, and then just soak up any excess wash that you don't want with the brush again. For any of the bronze, I used brown wash and just use it in exactly the same way as we did for the black wash. Washies can take a little bit more time to dry than normal paint, so just be patient with it. A little tip of what I do is pop it somewhere dry and warm, like an airing cupboard or something like that. Don't, for the love of God, put it in an oven or a microwave. Do not do that, God almighty. <laughs> with any of these steps, don't be afraid to go back and forth until you find the look that you like. At the end of the day, it's your hobby. It's your miniatures. Paint them how you like. 
So now comes the little bit of an experimental part with the OSL. What does OSL mean is object source lighting. Basically what that means is if you have anything like a candle or a flame or a glowing orb that would emit any light, you're painting in the light that that object is emitting. So that object is the source of the light, hence OSL. In this case, I wanted the big orb in the middle to be the source of the light. So anything that that light would be hitting, I wanted to paint. I saw on Instagram someone using a white base coat for anywhere where the direct light was hitting. So in our case, any light directly coming from that orb, when it hit a part of the armor or the model, I painted that white. One, I wanted to see if this would speed up my OSL process. And two, I wanted to see if it would make any difference between having that white base coat for any of the direct light against any of the dissipating light not directly coming from the glowing orb. Now, I wanted to do this with my airbrush, not because I would get any fancy effects as I was gonna go in later and do those with a brush. And I needed to mask off the round the area I was going to spray with my airbrush, which leads me on to a second little trick. And that is you can use blue tack to mask off any parts of your miniature that you don't want to be hit with any paint. You don't want to leave the blue tack on for too long because it can stick and it's a little hard to get out of the nooks and crannies. But leaving it on for half an hour is completely fine. This is what I did for around the central orb of this miniature. Went around it, making sure all the areas that I wanted to be white weren't covered and anywhere that I wanted to stay the colors they were, were nice and masked. Gave it a couple of passes with the airbrush. Once that white was more or less dry, I took that blue tack off immediately. I gotta admit, the blue tack idea worked really well. Have you used blue tack before for masking? Let me know in the comments of what you thought. Once that main area was done, I had a look at the protruding metal parts coming out from that orb and decided that they would block the direct light of the orb itself. So I just had four directions in a cross pattern of where direct light would be going. So I had that kind of cross shape of where the light would be going from the orb as its center. Now I started filling in those white sections with the green color. And it was at this point I realized that I need a lot more practice with this white base coat method for OSL. And I ended up just covering up the majority of the white areas with just a solid color of, of the green. Don't get me wrong, this is something I'm probably gonna go back to and try again at a later date. And don't be afraid for you guys to give it a go as well. If you do, I'd love to know how you got on with it. Did you have a bit of a problem like I did or did you find it even easier for your OSL? Let me know in the comments below. So with that in mind, I went around the miniature and just glazed in the areas where the light would hit on the miniature. This took a little bit longer, but the result I feel were well worth it. Getting brighter and brighter the closer to the orb we got. It was at this point I fixed my miniature all together and glued it in place. I did this now so I could see exactly where I needed the lighter areas for the OSL and having the miniature all together it was a lot easier to do this now rather than later and realize that I'd missed a couple of places. But with it all fixed together now, I could easily go in with some glazing and fix those areas. One thing with OSL to keep in mind is that the further away from the light source, the darker it's going to get because there's less light hitting. And with this, you don't want to add a black, you want to add a darker color. In this case, it's nice and simple with the green, I just went to the darkest green. But if you're painting blue, for instance, you might want to transition slowly to a dark purple. This is so you're keeping the saturation of your colors, but you're not muting them or getting a pastel color if you're going the opposite direction and going towards a brighter section. For these Necrons here, you can see that I used a yellow instead of a white. So we're keeping that saturation in the colors, keeping those vibrant colors alive. Once the main bulk of the OSL was done, I realized that I should have probably done my highlights before because in certain places where I've done the OSL effect and the light will be hitting, they would have highlights. But not to worry, you won't really see much of the edge highlights under that OSL effect that I've done. So I wasn't too worried about it. But do your OSLs after your highlights. <laughs> that being said, on to highlighting. Now with my Necrons, I didn't want sharp, super crisp edge highlights. I wanted them to be a bit messy. These guys have been in the ground for millennia and that comes across with the new sculpts of the Necrons with the Indominus box set. Some of them have eyes missing, cables hanging out from their stomachs, loads of things to show that they're not in pristine condition anymore. 
Obviously, the higher up the ranks of the Necrons you get, the better quality materials they're made from. So you're going to get less of that damage. So a Necron Warrior is going to be is going to look more battle damage than say a Necron Overlord. I wanted my painting to represent that. So with my highlights, I wasn't too careful with the edges and things like that. I let it overspill a bit. And by doing this, I created more of a scuffed metal look. So for my highlights, the colors I used was a silver from Vallejo and the brass from Vallejo. These both are from the model color range. You can just use any bright gold or silver that you have, as long as it's a brighter color than the base coat colors we used. This will help your highlights to pop out a little bit more and giving a little bit more of a punch to your miniatures. So with the highlighting, I went for two different directions. And because the panels on the top were large, smooth surfaces for the most part, I did more of a light dry brushing of the highlight color and then went around the edges and did an edge highlight. I went for more of an overbrushing slash uh, dry brushing technique for the those large armor panels for the same reason I did a quick and dirty highlight with the silver. These guys have been entombed for millions of years and they've just woken up and I wanted to replicate that in my painting. In this video I'm not going to go into the minutia of how I do my glazing but I do have a full video specifically on glazing. Also it's on Necrons as well. I'll put the link in the description and it will be in the cards as well for you. Go check it out after this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Last but not least, I glazed in the yellow green with the orbs, glazed in a green black transition on the two sides at the front. As I said before, go check my glazing video. It's in the description. With the orbs, I tried to do a little bit more of that white highlight. So around where the orb meets the armor casing, where it attaches to the rest of the miniature, I just put in a little line of white and then put in a little bit of the yellow green around it, just so it makes it look a little bit more like it's glowing. I think this worked all right, but like my earlier attempt at using white in OSL, I think it needs a little bit more practice, a little bit more tweaking. And once that was done, I painted a couple of gray highlights on the black cables and it was done. And that is how I paint my Sautec Necrons. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope that helps you guys paint your Necrons at home as well. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you gonna use any of these techniques? Are you gonna try and replicate this color scheme? Let me know, I'm always interested in your thoughts about these videos. If you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And if you wanna go a step further, I do have a Patreon. You've heard all the spiel on other channels before, I'm sure. There's two different tiers and you get access to a Discord as well, guys. The link is down below. And remember to say hi to Minus Alive, who very kindly supplied all the music for this video. Go check out both their new singles, Amen to the Storytellers and The Wildfire. Links are down below. But that is all from me at Bernard Quiller Painting. Thanks for joining us and thanks for sticking all to the end, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace!